Okay, for the part two video of this assignment, we're going to look at the next step, which would be posting our um, from our journal entries into our general ledger accounts, okay? So that's what this video is going to be about. What I have done is I have two windows open of my assignment, just so I I'm going to be scrolling back and forth and up and down, so I have these arranged so I can just do that um, on one side, and that way I get a little less motion sickness <laughs> from scrolling back and um, up and down all the time. So you'll kind of see um, how I do that here. If it, it'll probably make it a lot easier for you guys to do that as well. So just kind of keep that in mind when you go to fill out your general ledger. Okay, so in our ledger we have our list of accounts that we're working with again, okay? Every account that we used in our transactions for the month of January, we need to make a, an account for that in our general ledger. So for instance, we have our first account here, which is cash in bank. So when I look down here at our general ledger, I have my account name, which I gave all of these account names to you, you're welcome. And I already have that part filled out for you. I'm the best teacher I know. Um, so I put in the account name and the account numbers for you. So that ought to help you out. And then I also, in your, in your template, you'll notice that I had left, I've left some um, random numbers and account names in here just to help you out with kind of checking where you're at and making sure you're on the right track with um, posting in these ledgers. So. Again, you're welcome. Mrs. Lanfear, your teacher of the year. I get it. <laughs> okay, let's move on. So what, what we're going to do first is we have our first account listed here, Cash and Bank, and that's going to be the one we're going to work with. So what we do now is we look through all of our transactions for anything that involved the account Cash and Bank. Okay? Or we probably have it listed as cash in a lot of our transactions. So we see here that on January 1st, we use the account cash in our transaction. Okay, so we're going to copy this journal entry into our general ledger. Okay, this happened on, what date did I say? January 1st. Okay, and this next column, particulars, what this does is help you to uh, just identify the transaction that took place. So what we want to put in this column is the name of the other account that was involved in this transaction. Okay, just to kind of remind us, oh yeah, that's um, this was part of this transaction with this account. So we put Rex's capital in this our particular column. Again, we don't want to mess with post-referencing right now, but I do, I really do um, want you guys to read about post-referencing in your text because it is important to know, but we're just not going to mess with it now. And then, so since we're working with our cash account, we want to look over here and see what our cash did in this transaction. So in this transaction, our cash was debited for $5,000. So we're going to copy that over into our ledger. That cash was debited for $5,000. And then um, something else new that we are adding into with our general ledger is we also want to then say what our overall balance is after each transaction. Okay, so since cash is an asset account and an asset's balance is recorded in the debit column, we're recording our balance of $5,000 in our debit column. Okay, this, that would be the current amount in our cash account. Okay, so we have that first transaction put in there. Now we need to continue scrolling to see when the next time we used our cash account. And it looks like, okay, cash and bank on January 10th. So we come back to our ledger. We say January 10th. The other account involved was grooming supplies. And in this instance, this transaction, cash was credited for $400. We must have used $400 to make um, a purchase of grooming supplies. So now, in our general ledger, we put $400 as a credit. But now we, we need to say what our new balance is. So if we started with $5,000, and then we have a credit of $400, that means we spent $400. So that means we have a new balance 
of $4,600. Let me just pull up my... I'm just kind of getting on the same page on my other computer here. Okay, so th we have a new balance of $4,600. Okay, so now we move on to see the next time we use cash in a transaction. And no cash in that one. Here we have another cash in bank. This was on January 17th. So we come back to our ledger. Got in January 17th. This was a, with, involving our account payable with pets incorporated and in this instance or in this transaction we have cash being credited for 500 so again we must have put $500 towards our accounts payable so that gives us a new debit balance of $4,100 okay moving on to the next one we have another cash transaction here. This is on January 20th. And this includes involved X's personal withdrawals from the account. And in this transaction, cash was credited for a thousand. So this gives us a new balance, three thousand one hundred. Do you guys understand here how we're keeping the balance after every transaction? We're telling ourselves what's available after every single transaction. So now we scroll down to the next one. Here's another cash in bank, January 29th. This involved our salary expenses account. The cash was credited for 300, which gives us a new balance. 2,800. And let's see if we have one more. And we do. On January 30th, we have this one is involving our grooming revenue. So the revenue we brought in for grooming. And this time, our cash is debited for $2,000 over here. So we need to jot that down in our debit column in our ledger. And that gives us a new ending balance of $4,800. Okay, and since that's the last transaction of the month, January 30th, let's just kind of, I like to bold it to let me know that that's my ending balance of this account, of my cash account for January. All right, so then we would move on to the next account and do the exact same thing. So I'm going to scroll to the top. Over here with my journal entries and go right back down the list looking for grooming supplies. Okay, and when I was jotting down my journal entries, I don't remember a whole lot of them, so let's just kind of scroll quickly and see what we find. Nothing there. Oh, there's one. Grooming supplies on January 10th. So we jot that down, January 10th. This involved the other account of cash in bank. And in this case, grooming supplies was debited for $400. And since grooming supplies is also an asset account, okay, that also gives our, um, just like cash, we have our normal balance on our debit side here. So we copy $400 over. And it looks like that was the only grooming supplies transaction so we are done with that account. So let's move on to the next one. All right, um, so I think you get the gist of asset accounts. I want to do one. Um, okay, let's do this accounts payable, which is a liability account with you. So now we go back to the top of our journal pages and we're looking for accounts payable. And let's see, it looks like we have one on January 15th. So on January 15th, it's involved our grooming equipment account. Our account's payable, it looks like it was credited $2,000. So we must have bought something on account for $2,000. And now, since this is a liability account, okay, 
liability has a balanced side of credit. Okay, the credit is the normal balanced side. So we're going to copy over $2,000 into our credit balance side for a liability account. All right, so let's go through and see if there's any more. Oh, here's another accounts payable for the same company. Okay, each company that you have an account with will have its own account. Luckily, with these January transactions, we've, we were only working with Pets Incorporated. But uh, typically, if there were multiple accounts that we were working with, each account would have their own name and their own general ledger account also. So you put the company name with the accounts payable that you're working with. So this transaction was January 17th involved cash in bank and the account was debited for $500 it shows right here debited $500 so that means that account decreased $500 because it's a liability so that makes our new credit balance if we're decreasing by 500 that makes our new balance 1500 okay and then I'm going to scroll through See if there's any other accounts payable, and there isn't. So that this $1,500, that's going to be my end of the month balance for accounts payable. So that tells me that I still have $1,500 that I owe on that account um, at the end of the month. So we just did uh, a general ledger account for two asset types of accounts with debit balances and then we just did one for accounts payable which is a liability account with a credit balance so now you should be able to finish up those um, general ledger accounts and in the next video we will show you how to copy those balances over into a trial balance sheet